Welcome to another episode of the Pat Dad. I'm here with Chris and Dion, and we're talking about all kinds of shit today. Cause ain't nothing else to do. It's raining outside, and my panties way upside down. How y'all doing? <laughs> Better than your panties. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you at when you stay down there with the angel wings behind you? I know everybody been asking about these damn wings today. Uh, I'm at a friend's house. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. It's my big week as I film my Netflix special. Yeah. Are you excited? Are you nervous? Are you ready? I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't, you know, I've been doing the set now for a year and a half. I'm just ready to get the set done. So I don't have to do shit else. That's what I'm ready to do. So I can work on the new shit that I've been throwing out and thinking about. And, you know, it's nothing. I like I like being the underdog. So I like starting over. Right. You know, building. So I'm not one of them comics that I want to hold on shit forever. I don't mind starting over. So I'm excited to burn this shit. My next gig is San Francisco at, right after this. So I'm going to be all over the place. You know, chopping up shit, trying shit. Yay. You you like unlike Foxworthy or Larry the Gate, you have like an aversion to doing old material, don't you? Like how many different hours do you have that you've that you've just stopped doing? I don't know. I just, if if I feel like it's old, especially if I burn it on TV, I, I won't do it. I would not, I would try really hard. If I've done it on TV, I won't do it again. Nobody wants to see something they already did, or if it's on an album. Yeah, but so how so few people may know you had an album or had ever seen that Netflix thing or she treats she treats all her uh, audience members like they've seen her before. So <laughs> she never wants to go in and do something that she's done before because she like, feels like I just Fish. you 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 always you always go in and go oh they've heard this joke i'm like pat most of these people have never seen you before like you go to different cities even when you repeat a city like we just came from baltimore which is our third time being there together and it's like just because they saw you the first time doesn't mean one they're going to remember the joke or two that they still don't love the joke i remember seeing ralphie made he he did Cuba diving wherever he went. People love the joke, even if they know People it's love coming. The joke, you know? Yeah. So but I mean you've got jokes like I that where I... people love the joke, even if you're tired of it. Yeah, but um I mean to me, when you pay your money to see me, which I'm very appreciative of, that's why when you buy something from me at my table, I always throw something extra in there. I mean, I, I appreciate people. I do. I give them my arm band on idea. Yeah. I'm always, I'm always trying to give away stuff to show you how appreciative I am of you supporting what I do. Because you're spending your hard-earned money. You stood outside to come in and see me, and nobody wants to see the same shit. You know what I'm saying? So I work really hard to try to make sure that. You know, I'm giving you something new, you know, and I was a little worried about Baltimore because this is the hour that COVID hit. When we was there last time, I was working on Netflix, but and then COVID hit right after that. So I had to go back and I'm like, oh, but the, it, it went over really well. But I was a little worried, you know, but I'm like, I hate to do this, but that's why I always try to give them a little treat at the end once I finish. But, you know, I had to stay within the boundaries of the so I needed to get those 55 minutes I could throw a cherry on top. What about like you're you're talking to a whole new different audience now than you were five years ago or 10 years ago what about <laughs> some of that stuff from back then that would like would you ever consider like bringing out the shooting the nipple story like you know as a, as Nigga, a classic? No. no no what I said was I was like wow TV has really changed the audience not, not that I don't appreciate it, but, you know, like, I'm so used to, like, Joe Rogan and Burt Kreischer. And then I've always Bob wanted to the see Bob and Tom watch. audience. I mean, every the time I've seen you. Yeah. Yeah. But now it's like. Oh, Black people snatching up tickets fast. And I was like. <laughs> yes. And that, that's what he meant by that. And which I was like. 
you know, because it took black people so long to catch on. And I'm like, wow, okay, the audience is changed. And then, I mean, and what I like look- about, I like about people. What I like about people who's been through shit, and black folks will laugh at dark shit, molestation, and, uh, you know, where some audience, mostly Caucasian, were like, oh, they want to save you. Niggas be like, yeah, yeah, that funny nigga. You know, fall out <laughs> of the chair and run around in a circle. You know, and, and, but that's what I love about the diversity of the audience this weekend, even though it looked like it was really black, but it was, it was really mixed. But you could just, I could look down into people's faces where people was like, really like fucking laughing at the dark shit that I was saying. And some people were like, is this shit for real? <laughs> I think it's like, you can, you can see in the diversity of audience where each audience member comes from. <laughs> like you, you can see the Bob and Tom folk. You can see the Joe Rogan folk. You can see the Breakfast Club folk. You can see the podcast folk. Yeah. Like it's, it's very obvious where each group comes from, but they all sit together and have a good time. Those shows in Baltimore were really, really good. They was really good. And you know, I, I, I remember sitting there saying, damn, I, re- I worked 20 years to really have a long line and they came just for me. And they did. So thank you, Baltimore. Y'all really showed up and showed the fuck out. San Francisco is your turn now and Philly because we on our fucking way. So I'm excited, you know, I'm excited to shoot this special. I'm excited to get this shit out the way. I mean, at least something's going right. My fucking Falcons got drugged like a hoe this Sunday. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna have to just make a segment called Hold Down Sunday for the Falcons. Cause they it was got funny, cause out. you were saying you like to give some your fans new shit. I hope the Falcons give you some new shit and yeah, stop right. giving their ass whoop every week. Yeah. <laughs> they do give me new shit every week. They get beat in a different city. That's new shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! I knew Tom Brady was gonna whoop that ass. Yeah, literally, they was 24, 25 to twenty eight, right? So I said, okay, we ain't gonna lose too bad. I get up from the wing place and I leave. And by the time I get back to the house, nigga, it was forty eight. <laughs> I was like, where did the other two touchdowns come from? The fuck is going on? If they, you know, I'm, I'm, I know y'all tired of me ranting about these fights, but they can do better. They are out here killing their fans. They're breaking our hearts. They're tearing the ligaments in their unhealthy fans' heart. You cannot eat fried chicken and watch the foul. It's so fucking unhealthy. <laughs> Your is, is this a of silence? The leading the leading cause of death is watching Falcons football. The the cholesterol collides with the high blood pressure and just gives you a heart attack. You know, it's just this crazy shit. And then then they add to what's going on in the world. It's so fucking crazy these days. They add on to oh my god. If if, if yeah, if Quisha don't stop sending me these motherfucking COVID vaccine things where people nuts are swelling up. I, I'm so fucking sick of Quisha and her fucking conspiracy theories on COVID. I'm like, look, bitch, just look. Don't get the shot. But you're not going to keep sending me niggas nuts swollen up, <laughs> niggas dick falling out, people eyes popping out their head from no fucking COVID shot. You got to stop with this shit. She went full menage. She's fucking crazy. She got anything that happened is COVID did it. COVID did it. COVID did it. COVID ain't did a motherfucking thing, okay? Her friend, her friend get knots in her leg. COVID did it. She had a COVID shot. I said, well, the bitch also got cancer, okay? How you know cancer didn't do it? The fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> anything happened is fucking COVID. The bitch is COVID crazy. What, like, did she? I don't know. <laughs> There's I'm probably so a lot tired of, of these COVID <laughs> fucking conspiracy. <laughs> yeah. If you don't want the shot, then don't fucking get it. But don't be inboxing other people who've been vaccinated. We don't want to hear that bullshit. That's your belief, bitch. It's yeah, your fucking belief. Leave us alone. Leave a vaccinated nigga alone. If we're going to turn into motherfucking Spider-Man, let us turn into Spider-Man, nigga. I can't wait to get my powers. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get so tired. Every fucking, I got like 20 text messages from Quisha about dumb shit about fucking vaccination. I don't care. I've had the shot. Okay, it is what it is. Okay, 
I wish they put some weight loss in that motherfucker. That's how you get a nigga to take it. Tell me it's gonna give you a BBL. All these bitches be vaccinated. Tell me it's gonna make your ass or titties bigger. Everybody get the shot. Yeah, I had COVID this past week. It sucked. This is the second time I've had it. And I, I, you just lay on the couch for four days. The first three days, you were just like, I'm going to die. The, like the, the first two days, you just feel like your body's going to shut down. And then it just feels like you get all these random weird little symptoms for a few days, like, you know, super, super bad joint pain, bad headaches, heart palpitations. Like, you know, that was my worst symptom was the joint pain in my hips and my lower back. Oh, yeah. It, it, it felt like somebody was smacking me with a hammer for 36 hours. It was unbelievable. Yes. Yeah, you Never can't. Yeah. Felt anything like that before in my life. It was like you put your face in your pillow and scream bad. So, really? you know, when I think when I had it, it, didn't, it was just joint pain. It felt like arthritis. Yeah. But that's how my neck been feeling this week. So I'm like, well, damn, is it my neck? Is it me sleeping on flat pillows? Or do I have COVID in my neck? Come and hit me and hurt now. World's first case of isolated COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Come and neck. You know, we had to point out everything. You know, back in the day, we was all scared of HIV and AIDS. Now we blame everything. Back in the day, if a nigga got a pimple, that nigga got HIV. That nigga got AIDS. Look at him. His skin dropped. But now... Uh, we everybody think you call. Oh my God, you got you got COVID. Everybody so fucking scary. Who well, thought dry this? skin was AIDS? <laughs> <laughs> That's how crazy people was back in the nineties. <laughs> you know, and when you saw that movie Philadelphia, that shit didn't scare you. He, oh got, he got HIV. I know the cure, lotion. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah and, uh, like you I was the movie Philadelphia. I watched it last night. I love that movie. Really? <laughs> well, so well, my mama, my mama used to have. Uh, my mama used to. I told y'all this before. My mama was allergic to tomatoes, but she still ate them anyway. So she would get those lesions on her face like that because she was allergic to tomatoes, the acid and tomatoes. She couldn't eat them. But the doctor was like, "Ma'am, you gotta stop eating the tomatoes. The acid breaks you out." She like, "I don't give a fuck, nigga. I like tomatoes." And she would just bite them like apples. And she only had four teeth at the top, but she would eat the fuck nigga. She vampired the shit out tomatoes. <laughs> she bite that tomato, put them two fangs in that motherfucker tomato, and tear that motherfucker up like a rat. <laughs> but she would break out like in spots from the acid. And they would give her green. It was like the tomatoes, something about tomatoes would just break her skin out really bad. But she didn't give a fuck. And that's what she looked like. The lesions on it would put the lesions on her skin from the acid. She could not eat tomatoes. Wouldn't I also I, have a friend that could not Didn't touch that cause peach. her pain? She didn't give a fuck. Nigga, she vampire tomatoes every day. Wow. She put some salt on that motherfucker and put them too fine. Them look, she only had four teeth at the top. And bite that motherfucker and, and pull that motherfucker loose like a dog. And, and that's it's over, nigga. What a way to eat. Look, when my little brother was uh, young, he did that like three or four times where he would just bite. To he liked tomatoes. He wasn't allergic or anything, but he would just bite it one time and then put it back in the refrigerator and spin it around so you didn't see the bite mark. <laughs> so my mom would go <laughs> get ready to cook <laughs> and then there'd be a big ass chunk bit out of the tomato. <laughs> she used to spank the shit out of him for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my mama loved them, but she was allergic to them. She did not fucking like tomatoes. I mean, she I she couldn't tomatoes. eat them. She was allergic to the book. That that blows my mind that you like give yourself lesions like that. Like that had to hurt. Like why would you want to hurt yourself like that? It was just like she would just break out like into little spots and shit where it was irritate her skin. I ain't gonna say it was lesion, but it was like you can you knew when she ate a fucking tomato, like mm -hmm. a rash on her skin. And, you know, it will itch real bad. So, and the doctor was like, ma'am, you're allergic to tomatoes. Stop eating. And I was, fuck you, doctor. I fuck love you. I love that that AIDS resurfaced this memory. <laughs> 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 Philadelphia. Because when I saw Philadelphia, when I first saw Philadelphia, those spots on him remind me of the spots on my mom. And because she would break out when she ate tomatoes like that. Like, she would literally break out, mouth was sweat. She didn't give a fuck. She still ate them. And some people just like what they like, no matter if, even if they're allergic to it. 
You know, if you don't stop them from breeding, they'll just go eat the shit. I had a, I had a, my, we, this guy grew up with us named Jimmy. And um, Jimmy was allergic to peaches, the fur on the peaches. He could not touch them. Nigga, they would swell his big black ass up. He reminded you of the guy who played in the Green Mile. But he, uh, he was scared of peaches, as big as he was. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't touch them. They'll fuck him up. One peach would take that nigga down for a week. <laughs> uh well let's hey let's take a break we're gonna reset so, your internet because your internet's a little fuzzy that's better yeah i think so talk a little bit hey <laughs> <laughs> he said talk a little bit he talked the bare minimum he said talk a little bit and you just said one word <laughs> 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 well, I'm glad you're feeling better, Chris. Um, Thanks. Yeah, you gain so, like 10% of your energy back every day. You know, you get down to like 30% at, at one point. I'm just, I'm back to like 100% today for the first time. And Did you lose it, any weight? I lost seven pounds. Oh, you need to go about three more rounds of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> three more rounds of COVID, boy. You might look like a motherfucker. If if all you can yeah, get preach. down is is white rice one time a day for like three days, you can really lose a lot of weight. White rice. That's all I could eat. That's the only thing that I could like. Just, Why I, not brown rice, huh? <laughs> <laughs> racist motherfucker. <laughs> only eat white rice. <laughs> you know I don't like fiber. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You don't want no melanoma in your skin? Nobody does. That's, that's really bad for you. <laughs> what, what is it called? Melatonin? Melanin. 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 You don't want no Mel melanin? Melanoma is cancer. <laughs> oh, you don't want no melanin in your skin? I mean, I try it once or twice. <laughs> you ever thought about being black, Chris? I don't think so. I don't, uh, like in what, in regards to what? You ever wanted to be black? I think that black people are inherently much cooler than white people. Like, if Will Smith was just like a dork, he'd still be like cooler than me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I just, I think that white people look at black culture and we go, that's just, that's more fun. <laughs> 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 like, you're, like you're talking about the comedy show, like everybody running around, like a lot less, a lot less anxious, like, the, the what Dion talks about is comfort. I never thought about it till I met Dion, and he's exactly right. And now it's all I see in all my white friends and and myself. You're just like, I gotta keep, I gotta stay comfortable. I gotta stay comfortable. I can't be, I can't be bothered. And and wait a minute, the housing shortage is affecting me. I can't find a place to rent. This is terrible, you know. And so, you, you I, I admire the ability to have like to let things roll off your back a little bit more. You know, I, I've really appreciated getting to know this audience because they're like what all right whatever you know whereas white people are like i'm gonna storm the capital <laughs> you know so <laughs> so I, that that's definitely one characteristic of of all my new friends that i really like did you uh -huh. did you guys see that um that <laughs> i don't even want to call it a march because it was really like a small gathering like four four uh, <laughs> i mean i don't know how you all can tell the feds from the ralliers uh but who, who, you can tell Is the police from the rally while we, while we in dc yeah nobody came out nobody nope. came. there was there was like it was like less than 100 people Oh my God. So I was, I was picking up my rental car in uh, Baltimore, right? So a lot of them flew into Baltimore. And so I'm standing there and the guy, I was like, why y'all out of rental cars? And the guy was like, well, you know, it's a Trump rally in town. I was like, they still doing this shit. I'm <laughs> like, this point, this is, this is just a fucking barbecue. This is a gathering. Yeah. You know, fucking this, what, what is going on here? And so I look on my shoulder and it's one of the guys there for the rally. And it's an Indian lady helping him. And she was like, would you like to have insurance? I'm doing the accents horrible. I'm not even going to track. I don't want to sound racist. Appreciate she asked, that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. She, she asked him, did he want to do in, in a thick Indian accent where I understood it. He's like, I did it online. And he was just yelling at her. 
And I turned and I looked at him and I gave him that black mama bitch look. <laughs> like, keep it up, motherfucker. I'm going to say something. And finally, his I mean, he was yelling at this lady who was being so professional, so nice. He was just irritated. And I know what it was. He felt like she didn't belong in this fucking country. And his wife was trying to come in there. He was like, well, I did it online. And then she said, well, she has to ask you these questions. So I looked at it like, say it again, bitch. I pop you in your motherfucking mouth. And he didn't say anything else. And as they walked yeah. out the door, she was like, you can't be acting like this. And I started, I st what I was going to say, if he said it again, I was going to say, how would you like if somebody to talk to your beautiful white wife like that? And she wasn't even beautiful. But I was going to tell him <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> you disrespectful ass bastard. If you're that irritated with the world, you shouldn't even come outside. Facts. You should Facts. go and live in the fucking mountain with the bears and take your chance and see if a black bear going to eat you. <laughs> well, we saw what happened over the weekend. That dude took his girlfriend into the woods. <laughs> oh, yeah. What a crazy story. Do you know about this, Miss Pat? I, I saw they found her body. What did it, what happened? All right. So it's this, I think they're what, nine, like 19 years old? She was at least like pretty young. No, she was 22. He was 23. Okay. All right. And they're, they're travel vloggers. And so they, they live in this little white van or they travel around in this little white van and they go out into what's, what park, Dion? Teton National Park. Yeah, which somewhere is in Wyoming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he shows up a few days later back at their house that they live at. They live with his parents and she's not there. And then everybody's like, wait, where, where'd she go? <laughs> like he just, he just returned home without her. Nope. You know? And so now they, they started looking for, her. they find her body because another travel vlogger was out there shooting B roll for his stuff. And he was editing video a few days ago and saw the van and they tracked it and found her body and found disturbed dirt. So it like, how do you show her? up back? Well, yeah, we he, de he, 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 he definitely killed her. <laughs> now, Dion. <laughs> the, last no nigga, the, the, the last nigga to see her alive was him. And then he came home by himself and ain't talking to nobody. And now he disappeared. So he goes home. He spends a couple days there. The cops find out he's there, show up, and they're like, oh, he just went backpacking. We don't know anything. We invoke our Fifth, fifth Amendment to shut up. So the, the, his family's not cooperating at all. Her family's pleading, please tell us any information. Uh, and then he just ex escaped into some forest in, in the middle of Florida. Well, I'm sure he's probably going to kill himself if he hasn't done so already. If you go and look at his Instagram, it's basically like he's trying to cover like they're together out and still taking photos. But it's pictures of him with his phone like down shooting way up. Where basically he put the phone still, on the ground, set the timer. Vlogging? He was, yeah. He put the phone on the ground and like it looked like he was someone was taking pictures, but it's just the phone timer. And his Instagram's messed up. Like the art is crazy looking. Let me see if I can pull it up. Like, did I miss any details in the story, Dion? Yeah, they got into a fight. Um, they got into a fight and they got pulled over. I saw in the Utah. police pulled him over. Yeah. Apparently she hit him. And not, neither one of them wanted to press charges and they continued. This all happened back in like August because no one had seen or heard from him. And then he got home in the beginning of September, I think. Yeah. Oh, so she probably been gone for a while. Yeah. Her yeah. last post was in late August. And then his last post was, and you yeah, look at it, it's just tens of thousands of people going, where is she, buddy? I, I think it, he, well, he got back the, the 10th, September 10th, something like that. Yeah. But it's crazy. I mean, Gabby, Gabby Petito is her name. Yeah. And I think they found her body, right? The, the audacity for him to just come back home and act like nothing happened. Uh, that's that comfort of white men Chris was telling you that they have. Well, he looked at, he looked at the look girl's parents' face and was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know like, where she is. Like, you look for that beautiful ass little girl. I, you know, when the police pulled him over, she's so pretty. Yeah, so she's, you know, out here in this park. Her last post is three what weeks ago. And then here's his.
Like, so look at this, look at this photo of him, like shot from the ground. Uh, like clearly with his self timer as if he's somehow, but you know, that's August 13th. But like he's an artist apparently. And look at some of this stuff. That's crazy. He's gonna, he's gonna have plenty of time to join jail. I don't I don't think he's going to jail. I think he's gonna kill himself, to be honest with you. All right. So Nikea, I know what the answer is with Junebug with this. Nikea comes home and says, I've killed someone. Do you turn him in or do you help him? I said, you better get the fuck up out of here. <laughs> I'm a black mama, nigga. I don't got time for this. Cause they're gonna come look for you, they're gonna shoot all of us. It is your problem. You uh, no, 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 no. Matter of fact, I'm gonna call the police and tell them I got you. <laughs> you snitching now, on our kid. <laughs> Junebug comes home and tells you he's killed someone. <laughs> yeah, nigga, what you kill somebody for? It's time to go to jail, boo boo. It's time what you kill him for? Was it self-defense? If it ain't self-defense, you just out here killing girls, you got to go to jail. And I don't got no lifetime of cigarettes money. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? You done took a life, nigga. I don't got time for that shit. If it ain't self-defense, nigga, you got to go to jail. I love you to death, but I don't write good letters. I don't want them shitty ass jail letters with all them flowers on the outside. You knew better. <laughs> <laughs> you knew better. I've been to jail. Don't nobody want them motherfucking shitty ass letter with them flower and all that drawing on the outside of that shit. Mm -mm. <laughs> can you, can you, you picture it now, Spangle? Dear Mama, the walls look the same as yesterday as they did today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let I can't. Me, I can't imagine losing. Let me a child. tell you about can you the imagine, food. <laughs> can you imagine what that those parents are going through for this selfish ass <laughs> piece of shit ass boy? I can see I that kid now. I tried to suck my own dick today. I ain't let <laughs> nobody else do it. <laughs> I was like, I, and I would say, it should have been easy. Just pull that extra skin up. <laughs> 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 so I hate to change the subject, but I had the weirdest dream about Nakia about a week ago. Did I tell y'all? Nope. No. So I, I had this dream that I opened an app on a TV or something. Me and Gary Allen was sitting there. And it was somehow Nakia was on there with some men and they was gay. And he was floating in this water with all these bubbles in it with a, a soft dick in his mouth, holding it. I swore my hand to God and I called him. And he was just holding it like this, the soft dick. Weird. <laughs> I'm not lying to you. He was swimming and then, and I, me and Gary Allen just looked at each other and in the next picture, I'm not lying, the next picture, he was getting done in the butt and he was doing somebody else in the butt. And I was like, what the fuck is going on here? He got a white fed a family. And I was I woke up and I was on a plane and I was touching down in Atlanta. So I called Kiara and I said, I just had the weirdest fucking dream. I just dreamed Nike was floating in bubble bear water with a dick in his mouth. <laughs> Have you told him this dream? I did tell him that dream. What I, he said. I did. Did he, he said, tell you? Did he tell you you can't watch any more Little Nas X videos? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it was, but it was like, I don't know why I dreamed of that, but it was the weirdest fucking shit, y'all, that I would dream that he was like, he told me, he said, he said, you got me mixed up with your gay daughter. That was not me flowing with dick shit. <laughs> and, I'm out. and I'm like, no, no, it was you. And you were smiling. Like you were so happy, but in the dream, he was backstroking with the dicks in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how you knew it was a dream. He was in the pool exercising. <laughs> and it was, he was like happy. And it was crazy because the dick was limp, soft. And it was just hanging out of his mouth like a cigar. <laughs> I don't, I'm not even, I don't even want to know anymore. <laughs> what did you eat? I, I got so many questions. <laughs> Was it attached to a dude? Like, that is just was what I just, dreamed. It was just a penis? It was the, the next picture when I strolled, it was like on a TV. And then that's when they was doing like a threesome. And I looked at Gary, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and she had like, I told you so, look on her face. And I touched <laughs> her and I woke up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, more, I mean. no more Delta Lounge for you. <laughs> Maybe that's what it was, but I, I mean, I've never dreamed of him being like that before. So I asked him, I said, do you need to tell me something? 
<laughs> <laughs> Your dream mate. <laughs> what a weird like, what are you reaction. Talking about? Like I have a dream about you and all of a sudden do you need to explain something to me? <laughs> because he was so he was he was so happy with the, with the soft, soft cigar dick. <laughs> I don't oh think gosh. Nike Nike is probably never gonna smoke again. I don't I don't know. I just I, I, it was weird seeing him like that. Um, um it was I just imagine weird. it would be really weird to watch your child in a threesome on your TV <laughs> with your daughter. Yeah, it was like I hit the <laughs> app and it, it pops up and all his porn pictures pops up. And I was like, what in the holy shit fuck was that? And bam, there he was. So are you coming down to see me tape my Netflix? Uh, I would love to. Let me get some information for me afterwards. So, Oh, Chris, you got to come. I haven't had a chance to talk to you because uh, about it. So I assume my ticket's free. Look at <laughs> and, Chris, and for, I'm going to tell you right now, she didn't have a dream where you were flying on a plane for free. <laughs> 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 I meant the ticket to the show. Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, <laughs> we, should just, we, we, we just did the math in her head. Mm. <laughs> I ain't that fucking cheap. I'm a little cheap. Yeah, yeah it, it's been it's been a really a rough week. I'm telling you, y'all, this special shit has really gotten to me. I'm just so glad when I get this shit is over. And, get this show going and it's just so much it's, it's a lot of other shit that i want to do it's, it's so hard doing this shit because they try to tell you what you can't do and when you're 49 years old you're like bitch i'm grown i can do what the fuck i want to do yeah so you've i feel like and dion tell me if i'm wrong but i feel like you're as nervous if not more nervous about this than you were the tv show I don't want to use the word nervous because I don't want to do that on stage and make forget my fucking joke. The good part about it is it's TV, so you can always rewind. Uh, that's one of the biggest things I, I worry about, my set. So that's why I'm running it Thursday and Friday night. So if you can't make it to the Thursday and Friday night, if you can't make it to the Saturday show, which is already sold out, y'all can come the 23rd and the 24th. Um, I don't really know if nervous is the thing, you know, because it's TV. I'm just going to go do me. I'm not putting all that pressure on me. I'm not thinking about the cameras. I'm not thinking about the people. You know, you. It, I'm just. I just want to get it over with. Yeah, I don't think she's nervous about it. I think she's more anxious just to to finish the production because, like she said, she's been working a year and a half. It's finally here. You've had a few hiccups with it over the past what week and a half, two weeks. So I think she's just ready to get it done. And yeah. you know, you got those two warm up shows, which I'm Great. sure are going to be great three warm-up shows so yeah it, it's it's gonna be fine i just I, I i feel i feel working with her that she's ready to move on with another set like i've noticed that probably in the past two weeks it's like she's got it down the way she wants it and she doesn't need to work on it anymore she just needs to get it out so do you tape every single one of those and mash them all together or is it just a live taping here's here's how saturday night we're turning the cameras on and that's what gets broadcast no it's like it's like the tv show you do it in front of a live audience too and then you put you just mash it together that's gotcha. why you get on the same clothes the same hair and you know come out and uh i haven't picked a song i gotta pick a song to come out to somebody was like you should come out to your theme song from your show that'd be cool you wouldn't have to pay extra. <laughs> yeah. I can send you the MP3 for the podcast theme if you want that. Uh, no. Nah, I, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I like, I don't know. You should have I'm, your nephew create you a, a, a new song. Yeah. Yeah, if I was going to do that, it's, 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 it's five days out. It's, it's too late. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so I got to gather pictures and do all kind of other crazy shit. Just what if you crazy. what if what if we lay down the tracks right now you sing your own <laughs> intro <laughs> I'm going over yonder <laughs> I'm going up yonder to be with my love <laughs> Yeah yep, up... get it get it <laughs> 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 Yep yep get it, get it. <laughs> I can see my 
titties flying up and down in the air. <laughs> <laughs> and my panty line is stuck on my chest. <laughs> yeah. My friend does nothing but talk. That's all she do back there is just talk. Is that what's going on back there? <laughs> yeah, can you hear her? Uh-huh. I have a she, toddler she, in the next room and she's being quiet. <laughs> yeah, she, she won't. She she's at work. She yabby 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 yabby. Oh, well, she's at work. That's different. Yeah, she's yeah. at work. <laughs> she, she's probably yeah. in there going, "I'm so sorry." She never shuts up. She would talk all the time. <laughs> That's what she's probably saying about me too. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You is you, you exactly right. <laughs> you exactly fucking right. <laughs> I thought that was the TV. That's funny. You thought it was a TV? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I did do last night? I said, Tracy, be quiet. She's working. <laughs> you don't tell somebody to be quiet in their own house. <laughs> You're a guest. <laughs> Pat, I'm working. <laughs> That's why I said that because I knew she was going to say that. I, um, I, uh, <laughs> What the fuck was I about to tell y'all? <laughs> Something happened last night. Huh? You you said you were watching TV. Oh, I actually watched Nigga Poppins. Because I don't know if you noticed this, Dion. They've started to yell out uh, lines from the show at my show. Yeah. And they was getting on my fucking nerves. <laughs> at, yeah. Ooh, nigga Poppins! I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Let Denise back in! I'm like, uh, you, you motherfuckers, don't shut up. <laughs> And it was so fucking crazy because all they wanted to do was talk about the TV show. And so, oh, I, I, I don't, when we went to the Falcon game, I told you about when we went to the Falcon game, how white people, it's, 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 it's so crazy how my people express themselves versus other people. White people are like, Miss Bat, I love this show. White people, black people, nigga! <laughs> nigga! <laughs> <laughs> and you don't know these people and they the first thing out they mouth is nigga I'm like what the fuck wrong with these <laughs> <laughs> and that's all they keep walking up to me saying nigga that shit good and I'm like do I know you you do <laughs> I'm like well, nigga can you introduce yourself to me <laughs> you, you sound is, like uh, you sound like <laughs> Dave Chappelle when people kept walking up to him and being like Rick James bitch <laughs> 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 and then I'm like, people, can you can you at least say hi first instead of just calling me the N-word in front of everybody? Yeah. <laughs> what, what, is, I, what is the line that you get the most? Um Wi-Fi nigga. Uh, oh, yeah. choir. Choir, Wi-Fi nigga, uh 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 fuck uh, 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 fuck 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 them kids. Yeah. And, and fuck, fuck him, fuck him, Terry. Fuck him, Terry. I get those are the lines I get the most. Fuck him, Terry. Fuck them kid. Wi Fi nigga. <laughs> and it's so weird. I'm like, what the fuck? That's oh, it's like when people read the book and they be like, they ask me about uh whatever my husband. Now, I think his name is Terry in the fucking book. I don't know what the fuck. Oh really? Book. I don't know what his name is in the book. Michael. Michael. They be like, yeah. oh, Michael was so sweet. I'm like, who the fuck is Michael? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, the book. And so what I did is I started taking this little card in my purse of all the characters. So when people get to talk about the book, I pull out the card. Oh, oh, this motherfucker. I know you're talking about <laughs> Because I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. It's a goddamn book. Why did it's you change their names? Especially since you talk so much about them on stage. My husband didn't want his name out there. Oh, okay. And Gary Anna didn't want her name in the book and Ashley I always want her name because she wants a shout out to the pussy eating. <laughs> Man. She wants to eat everybody. And she this bitch will help me when I do the gay part. She all I eat pussy. I said you got one more time to be at my show. She is she uh when we were in New York, Miss Pat <clears throat> finishes her set and then I hand her, her merch to do her her rundown of her merch on stage and Ashley goes me do it. There's some gays here. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I ain't gonna cock block on you. <laughs> always, she, uh, she always want me to say, uh, I'm, this is a gay baby. That's what she mm -hmm. always want me to say. I'm like, haven't you eaten enough pussy in your life? <laughs> haven't you, you eaten, you, haven't you eaten your way to hell? You can never, you, you can never eat enough pussy, Miss Fat. <laughs> no, uh, no, I think you can't eat enough pussy. No, mm -mm. one swipe at me is over. 
<laughs> Have you seen those videos of the timing belt where people put deodorant on it to make it stop squealing? Maybe you should try putting no. some deodorant on your pussy, Miss Pat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I used to do that. I used to, we used to do put deodorant on your vagina, on your hair, so they don't stink. So you stay dry because you fat. Uh, are you serious? I think I have COVID again. People, people <laughs> rub deodorant down. I don't they trace. Where's the vaccine to take that out of my head so I never think about that again? They do rub deodorant on their vagina. Fat people. Well, you're not fucking fat. You don't have no futon on your pussy. <laughs> <laughs> That's for people who got a futon on their pussy. <laughs> you put the deodorant up under the flaps and stuff and pile them so you stay fresh. A futon on your pussy. <laughs> wow. What do they call them? Futus? A, fu- a fupa. A fupa. A fat upper pussy area. <laughs> My ass thought they were called futons. <laughs> futons. <laughs> they, they, they will be from now on. <laughs> you just I killed thought, the word fupa. <laughs> I thought they were calling them futons on your pussy. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's the name of this episode, Chris. <laughs> yes. Futon on your pussy. <laughs> Good lord. It's got, I thought on futon, a futon folds. <laughs> <laughs> Don't a futon fold? It does. I didn't know that. What are they call? A futon. Foot. It's a, be- a bed or a couch. But what do you say they call the fat a, on our pussy? A fupa. A fupa. You never heard of fupa? Because you smart. My friend never heard of fupa, but she heard of futon. <laughs> she probably has a futon. No, Miss Grace is small as hell. No, I'm talking about pussy. in her house, not on her pussy. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't got no futon on her pussy. She's small. I got a futon on her pussy. Okay. And a and a and a twin bed. <laughs> Why are you looking disgusting, Chris? Because I'm disgusted. <laughs> Fuck you, Chris. You got a full time too, and you ain't got no pussy. <laughs> I I mean I haven't recovered from putting the dandruff or whatever the, the deodorant on your pussy hair to keep her from like, like I just had I can't taste or smell right now. So maybe this everybody is do that. For us. Everybody do that. I'm, I'm not not oh, everybody. No. Teaching. You never heard nobody putting deodorant on their pussy. I've heard them using their spray. What spray? No, they put deodorant on their pussy. MTS. No, they put deodorant on a pussy. Okay. Like I've heard, know. you know, like the talcum powder and stuff. But no, people rub deodorant on a vagina. There is a new deodorant out specifically for your genitals. It's like Lumi or Loom or something like that. No, but you can take you can take the secret and rub it on your hair so they don't get musty. <laughs> you can take the secret. <laughs> Keep it a secret. <laughs> Ooh, Quisha, I'm telling. Quisha know all of this ghetto shit. <laughs> you can take the. You can she take never the had a futon on her pussy though. She got fat people at her shop. Well, Quisha's shop is a different world. Yeah, I mean that's fat people shit. Where they rub deodorant on their pussy. Well, you gotta, you got when you big and now you gotta do all kinds of shit. And this is before. They made all the fenomy wash for the pussy. That was back when people were putting bleach in their water. Whoa. <laughs> bleach your pussy? No. <laughs> this boy said bleach your pussy. You remember the bleach song? Yes, black people used to bathe in bleach. Why? Who told you, you know to do no that? Better? Told them that's how you clean your pussy. They take two tops of bleach and throw it in everybody, even your kids' bath water back in the day. Wow. And you wash these shit out of them. I don't mm. know if we were trying to get white, or what? But if we, if you never miss the bell with that bleach. Well, that's why. I I, re, I, re, I remember the two the two capfuls of bleach in the bath. You, everybody took a bath with two caps full of. No bleach wonder you're putting bath. cocoa butter on all the time. You're irritated. <laughs> <laughs> you put cocoa butter on because you were black, Chris. It, it, it removes the balls and shit. But you, we have dry skin. That's probably why the skin was so fucking. That's dry. what I'm saying. Put the vinegar in there. <laughs> way yeah. better for you. Well, they put vinegar in their vagina. Yeah. Wow. I, I did have and one. Vinegar and Coke, Coca-Cola tighten the pussy. I went to an event where I knew I was going to have to take photos this summer, and I put deodorant on my under my man titties and on my back. 
in the lower back where I sweat all the time. That's the only time I've ever done that, but it was 99 degrees. It didn't See? work. I sweat everywhere. It did work. It, 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 it did. It did work to, to like reduce the amount of sweat, but I still sweat. Yeah, and, it's, and if you would have put it on your white vagina hair, I mean, white <laughs> dick hair. <laughs> you know, you pretended that was a Freudian slip and fuck you for that, but very funny. <laughs> you still want an apology. <laughs> It would have worked down there too. Them little, hairs, <laughs> little red hairs you got laying down like little soldiers. It would have worked down there too. For you to put it on that beard around your dick, it would have worked down there too. That's funny. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's, we do it all the time. We don't do it anymore because we got more feminine watches. You got uh, you got panty liners and stuff like that. Have and you seen thank them? you to the people who brought me panty liners. I truly appreciate them. Did you see that video of that little black kid? who was explaining coochie wash to his mom. <laughs> <laughs> no. He couldn't have been no more than one years old. And he was like, coochie wash. <laughs> 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 he had a little towel wrapped around his waist. Like he was a grown ass man. <laughs> he had it in his hand. He handed it to his mom. She go, what's that? He go, coochie wash. <laughs> <laughs> I did see that. <laughs> Yeah, that's before all the good shit came along. Now we got the good shit. So black people, that means that's like you used to wash your collar green with motherfucking tired washing pile. They don't do that anymore. Yeah. And they use uh, salt now. Wait, did you just say call it, wash your collard greens and talcum powder? No, tied washing powder. Who 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 was washing greens and tied? My mother. Lord have mercy. Yeah, we did. No wonder cancer rates are so high in this country. That, in the my mama used to eat white dirt. You remember white dirt? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a oh my fucking iPad don't go dead. It's a laundry store called cornstarch. And that was very popular in the black community in the South. It's white dirt, but it's actually cornstarch, it's laundry detergent. They, the government called hell. I mean, I ain't gonna say the government, but it was hard to get black people off of that white, it's called white dirt. Y'all ain't never heard of it. No, I've heard of Google, it's in a, yeah. Yeah, good. It's in a red and white box, but we would just eat it. That it was fucking laundry detergent. I didn't even know it was laundry detergent until I grew up. <laughs> you would just go to the store and eat it, called white dirt, cornstarch. Some so people you, still eat it. White they, dirt. Let's rescue those people immediately. <laughs> cornstarch is nasty. It's dry, it's gritty. But you just, people just ate it. Down south, they ate it. That's, mm. that's so tragic. That's it's tragic. not tragic, it's just, it was like a snack. No, it's not a, <laughs> no. Nothing like a snack. <laughs> <laughs> Snacks are supposed to be good for you. Like not chips. Not Argo. No, I'm telling you, we ate it down south. It's called, it was called white dirt. No, I'm not denying that you did it. It came in a red and white box. You sh you shouldn't have been doing it, especially no, if you, you use it to wash clothes. Yeah, we're doing the Tide Pod challenge before anybody else. Yeah, we was. So I found an article on eating clay dirt, white clay, porcelain clay, like. And it was used medically to treat diarrhea, dysentery, cholera, and paper making. Here it is, white dirt. Grandma white dirt. That's what it looked like, cocaine. Mm. Go closer. See yeah, said grandma white dirt. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is just this is basically the same kind of the same look as what I got here. It, it looks just yeah. kind of like that. Yeah, that's what they used to eat, but it's, it was for your laundry. It came in a red and white box. It absorbed toxins. Um, the binding effect from the clay, um, from the plant toxins, would would grab onto things, which is why people thought that it was good to eat. Jesus Christ! So they like, still sell it here too. They sell it at the curb market. Hmm. It shows like tough. tracking down, tracking down like. <laughs> like random weird things that happened in the south that people used to white, do white dirt i'm telling you it was white dirt my mama everybody ate white dirt they fed it to the kids so to counter the toxins from the tomatoes she'd eat one she'd eat clay <laughs> <laughs> no wonder she lost her teeth 
eating rocks. <laughs> Did she soften it in water before she ate the clay? Ooh, we just ate it just like this lady eats it. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody would get a chunk. It was like cookies at the house. This is whitedirt.com, white dirt of Georgia. You can buy some white dirt right now. And people still eat it down For south. Nine, people still eat it. What why? I don't you know. You can follow why. him on Facebook, Dion. <laughs> no, nah, follow him on Facebook. <laughs> Let's get him to join the pat down group. <laughs> it was called, it was called, it's, it's Argo corn, corn starch. They ate that too. The Argo corn starch was in a red and white box. Here Argo it is. Corn this is what we ate. That's what we ate. That is wild. On laundry starch, like, oh, like you'd use on your shirts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> My mom used to eat it. White dirt. They called it white dirt. You go to the store and just buy it like chips. Just gonna, buy chips. <laughs> I'm going to leave. <laughs> just, just buy chips, nigga. <laughs> I'm going to leave a review on the Amazon that says, taste delicious. <laughs> <laughs> People probably do have a let's see, let's see what the reviews say. Look, they got 203 reviews. Holy shit, rate features five out of five stars for flavor. <laughs> <laughs> well, do it's it's got a flavor. It, yeah, you could juice flavor. I'm telling you, they used to eat it when we was little. That's the beauty of the South, baby. That's the beauty of the South. I'm a northerner. I can't do it. Yeah. That Mason Dixon line is a motherfucking bull. <laughs> if you ain't no slave when you when you was on your way, you be you had that mentality by the time you leave this motherfucker. <laughs> and with that said, that's how we're gonna end this podcast. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to another episode of the Pat Down. Make sure you check out my website at misspatcomedy.com for all of my social media, my tour dates, my book. Make sure you spread the word about my podcast. Please rate and review. Please rate and review and share. Thank y'all so much, y'all. I've been Miss Pat.